Otto Bell had seen this BBC story about Ashel Pan and the Eagle Huntress, and I was really excited. I saw the vistas straight away, I saw the story straight away. It's just one of those things that had to be done. It was not funded, there was no money. We had to do it on a shoestring. The main problem when you're going and filming a low budget film in a remote place with two people, not 22 people, and a whole load of equipment. This was the biggest challenge we faced, but it's what we wanted to do. We wanted those shots, we wanted the tracking shots, we wanted the aerial shots, we wanted the stabilized steady cam shots. We wanted it all, so we took it all, 700 kilograms of it. Modern technology is largely responsible for this sort of filmmaking to be possible now. The basics of our equipment were a red epic camera, a couple of zoom lenses. I used the 18 to 50 zoom a lot and the 50 to 150 zoom a lot. I found the red epic to be a very versatile and reliable camera. It's small, it shoots very high frame rates, which is great for slow motion. We also had a lightweight crane, which extends to nine meters, which is pretty impressive for something that weighs 25 kilograms. My crane is basically built like a ship mast. It, it dismantles in 10 minutes, reassembles in 10 minutes. And of course, the drone is probably the biggest technological advance in filmmaking. You can achieve aerials, tracking shots, jib shots, all very, very quickly and with minimal equipment. The drone is controlled by two people, one pilot and one gimbal operator. I had a Blackmagic pocket camera on the drone gyro-stabilized gimbals are another huge innovation, enabling you to keep your camera rock solid whilst it's in the air. I mean, you really can use a drone as a tripod in the sky now. I think some of the shots, particularly with the drone, were the most rewarding, purely on the basis that they were so damn hard to achieve. Nine times out of 10, we couldn't fly. Something would go wrong, something would pack up. But when it happened and we were in the air, that was a great moment. And I look back at the film now and I see those shots and I think, God, nobody realizes just how tricky that was. And it's a very beautiful part of Mongolia. We had a Canon 150 to 600 with a two times converter, which we used for the eagle shots. They can be quite challenging because, of course, an eagle flies very quickly. And if it's flying towards you, you have a depth of field, an area in which you have to maintain focus, which is probably no more than a foot. Eagles, like most animals, don't like to do things more than once. So you had to get it first time. We had some GoPros. We used it as a POV camera on one of the eagles at one point. We'd had a special holster made to sit behind the eagle's head. It gives the sequence a little bit of dynamism. The main focus was then filming Ashel Pan competing in the annual eagle hunting festival. It is essentially a party in a sandstorm. I had to send my camera off for a new sensor at the end of that shoot, simply because it got so scratched by dust. And, and we were very careful changing lenses. It all had to be covered in real time. There was no second takes on anything. So we chucked cameras at everybody we could, and we just went for it. The most difficult scene was the winter scene because you're suddenly throwing a wild animal into the mix. Combine that with minus 40, deep snow, tired, poor diet, a drone camera, screen would freeze. It was very, very difficult. We just kept going out every day in the hope of catching a fox. And finally we got it. Issues with communication. That actually turned out to work to our advantage. There was no real option for retakes and doing things differently. You obviously feel as a cameraman, when something's not quite right, you want to redo it, but it just didn't feel like it was the right thing to do in this particular film. So we were very keen not to stop them and make them redo things and shoot it for real as it happened. And for us all to move ahead of them and not slow them down. And to try and shoot it in a way that's beautiful and shows the landscape and shows how arduous the journey is, because they're what brings these stories to life. You know, it's like a beautifully written book as opposed to a book that just tells a story.